Before I start, please don't skip this part of the video. People do this, then they ask questions that could be answered by just watching the video. So if you want to and you're running out of time, go to the description and look at the timestamps because it'll help you navigate the video better. But I would appreciate it if you sit through the video and actually focus because, well, you want to learn how to make your beard grow better and potentially enhance it if you don't have any hair growing there. So watch the video. Also, please ignore other guides from the internet. This is a separate guide. So please don't ask me questions about other guides you found online. I cannot answer for them. I'm not even going to answer it. Just everything that I'm going to answer in, ter in terms of questions will be about this particular video. And I have to say this. Some people need to stop with the bullshit treatments. This includes, particularly, using oils like rosemary oil, jojoba oil, argan oil, and many other oils. They are not going to stimulate the hair in your beard area or even your scalp to grow new hair or speed up the hair growth by any means. Oh, but I know somebody where they put oil or, you know, I put oil in my hair and then... No, please stop. There's no scientific evidence for that. Just stop talking. In fact, it may even be harmful if you have an allergic reaction to the pollen and trees where these oils come from. This can create an inflammatory response to the part of skin where you apply it. So, for example, if you put it on your scalp, that may not be good. If you put it on your beard, that may also not be good. Due to the inflammatory response that you may get if you have an allergy to these oils. And inflammation to the skin and the hair follicle is not a good deal. So if you don't want to end up like that one guy that used the Dr. Sebi's oil hair follicle serum on his scalp, and then he had his face and his scalp pretty much blow up and expand and become super inflamed, I'd suggest you stop using them. Look, I'm not saying oils are completely useless. They do have some use cases if you have dry skin on your body and particularly on your scalp. In such a case, then yeah, sure. Oils may even help reduce breakage by providing the hair shaft with some strength. This reduction in breakage gives the illusion that the hair may be growing faster because the hair is retaining its length. But anything else and any other claims that state that it can stop hair loss or it can stimulate the hair follicle like minoxidil can to grow hair faster, that has not been proven by rigorous academic studies. I know, I know, nobody likes to read a study, but it's simply not true. It can, again, even harm you if you have an allergy to them. So if you're experiencing hair loss on the beard or on the scalp, the truth is oils aren't going to help you. But this is not a video criticizing oils or anything like that. We are going to be focusing on how we can increase the hair count in our beard area. So we can take somebody from going from a fine patchy beard to something that's somewhat presentable. And the treatment protocol and the particular stack, and a stack is essentially the components of the protocol and how they interact with one another, could potentially do this in as little as a year to a year and a half with consistent use. And if you like this channel and the information that I give out for free, please consider becoming a channel member for as little as $2 a day. Links in the description below, as always. So without further ado, I know it's been a long intro, but let's get on with this video. Thanks for watching. Now, before I continue to give out this guide, let me start off by saying this is just something that worked for me and others that I know when we ran a similar protocol for about a year to a year and a half, and then we discontinued. We didn't experience any hair loss in the beard when we discontinued, so I just want to make that clear. There are also some scientific studies that I will be pointing to that are high quality and also inform the creation of this particular guide. So it's not just bullshit anecdotal experience. This is actual scientific stuff that we're going to be using here. And as a disclaimer, I'm literally not a medical doctor or any sort of medical healthcare professional. So before you start anything, please go talk to your doctor to see whether or not it is feasible for you to do something like this. Even though I'm going to give some explanations and attempt to encourage safety as much as I can, some people can react differently and sometimes make mistakes in how they use these particular treatments. So take agency in your health and talk to a doctor. But now that I've covered my ass here, <laughs> let's go on with this video a bit further. So we're going to list in order on how we will use this stack. So remember, a stack is just how various parts of a particular protocol come together to contribute to a particular outcome. 
Later on in this video, I have the steps on how to use these, but please stick around and learn more about the parts of this protocol. But anyway, here is the stack. Hydration toner, 5% or more azelic acid, 0.025% or more tretinoin, or you can use adapalene gel, 0.1%, some kind of moisturizer, 5% topical minoxidil, and an SPF 30 plus sunscreen. So we're now going to jump right into the protocol, so please pay attention, be very careful, and listen closely. And then, later on in the video, we're going to look at the scientific studies that helped rationalize the creation of this protocol. So, again, let's get into how these various components are going to be used together to grow that beer of yours. So let's have a quick overview of the protocol. Tretinoin at 0.025% or higher should start at twice weekly, then increase gradually in frequency until the skin can handle concentrations up to 0.1%. Tretinoin aids in promoting collagen production, which can support hair growth and um, overall skin health. Also, there's evidence that it can increase sulfur transferase enzymatic activity in the skin. This helps minoxidil work better. Also, it allows for deeper penetration into the skin. A crucial element in this protocol is the use of SPF 30 plus sunscreen, which should be applied before any outdoor exposure, as these treatments can increase sun sensitivity. This is particularly important for those with lighter skin tones or individuals living in sunnier climates. Finally, a hydration toner and moisturizer should be used in conjunction with azelaic acid and tretinoin to mitigate drying effects and before applying minoxidil. This can help maintain skin health and prevent irritation. Now, if you want to keep track of the hair growing on your beard and mustache, you can use a dermoscope or a digital magnifying camera of some kind. I have a link in the description on where to buy one. Also, you can use your phone in consistent lighting conditions. This protocol should be followed consistently for about a year to a year and half. So now we can look at a full year treatment schedule for this particular protocol. So weeks one through eight, this would be the initiation phase. So we're going to start with using acetic acid three times a week at the lowest concentration we have it at, and then twice a week tretinoin, starting with the lowest concentration we can handle. Increments should be done in their frequency over weeks. Minoxidil should be applied daily. Sunscreen should be applied every time one goes outside. For the drying effects, one is to apply the hydration toner and moisturizer from weeks 9 to 26, maintenance phase. During the maintenance period, the azelaic acid is applied with a frequency of up to five days a week, while tretinoin will be used up to three times a week. Minoxidil should be uniformly used each day, and sunscreen, toner, and moisturizer should be used as in the previous weeks. From weeks 27 to 40, boost phase, azelaic acid and tretinoin can be increased to concentrations of 15% and 0.1% respectively if tolerated. Otherwise, their concentrations in the formulation will remain as before. Frequency of application should be modified considering the response of the skin. Metoxidil to be continued daily along with supportive skin care. From weeks 41 to 52, stabilization phase. Here, in the stabilization phase, be sure to maintain treatment as required to sustain hair growth results at the present level or adjust it if necessary. By now, you should see some very noticeable visual improvements. I would say that you should at least push to the year and six months mark or go for a full two years before formally discontinuing. So now we're going to go through the step-by-step -step guide on how I and others went about putting these things on our beard area. And please pay attention to any sort of sensitivities you may have regarding some of these products. Because, again, there is a photosensitivity to aspects of this particular stack. So be very mindful of that. And be mindful of just your skin's tolerance towards things like tretinoin and azelaic acid. Also, once again, please check with your dermatologist if you can handle these kinds of products because some people, although rare, may have an allergy to some of these things. And one more thing. I wouldn't say you should microneedle while using these products because microneedling in and of itself can be very harsh to the skin, so I would avoid that altogether. Don't microneedle with any of these particular products or in conjunction with these products. Please don't microneedle. I wouldn't do it. 
So if you're still watching the video, I want to say thank you. But now we're at the particular part of the video where we're going to be looking at the scientific studies that helped create this specific beard growth stack. So if you're still watching, just sit down and, you know, you'll have the sources in the description to kind of double check and go in depth into the research yourself. Minoxidil helps stimulate hair growth by multiple mechanisms. One mechanism is widening the blood vessels, which increases blood flow to the hair follicles, potentially helping vellus or baby hairs grow into terminal hairs by reaching deeper into the tissue and widening. Additionally, minoxidil may also act by opening potassium channels in the cells, but its complete mechanism of action is not fully understood. In a series of compelling studies, the efficacy and versatility of minoxidil in promoting hair growth have been explored in various contexts. According to Arvind Shokravi and Hanya Zargam in their article titled, quote, Facial Hair Enhancement with Minoxidil in Off-Label Use, unquote, identical male twins were observed in a head-to-head -head study. One twin used 5% topical minoxidil foam daily on his beard and mustache, while the other served as the control for the experiment and did not use any treatment. The treated twin initially observed finer, lighter hairs after one month and a modest increase in density by the second month. Despite shedding after three months, his facial hair recovered and continued to grow progressively, showing significantly higher density after 16 months compared to the untreated twin. Similarly, Siddichai Ingpresert and colleagues, in their letter to the editor, Efficacy and Safety of Minoxidil, 3% lotion for beard enhancement, a randomized, double-masked, placebo-controlled study, demonstrate that 3% minoxidil lotion significantly increases beard hair count compared to placebo, with minimal side effects, emphasizing its potential for cosmetic beard enhancement. Furthermore, Kenneth C. Pang and his team discuss in their case report successful use of minoxidil to promote facial hair growth in an adolescent transgender male how minoxidil provided significant facial hair growth for a transgender male adolescent, enhancing his gender expression and confidence prior to commencing testosterone therapy. These findings collectively underscore minoxidil's broad applicability and effectiveness in not only traditional hair loss treatments, but also in diverse cosmetic and therapeutic scenarios involving hair growth. It's important to note that minoxidil requires the enzyme sulfotransferase to be effective, which converts it into its active form, minoxidil sulfate. This active form is responsible for stimulating hair growth. Due to genetics, individuals have varying levels of sulfotransferase in their skin, affecting minoxidil's efficacy. However, it's known it has been shown to increase the production of sulfotransferase, thereby enhancing minoxidil's effectiveness. The study efficacy of 5% minoxidil versus combined 5% minoxidil with 0.01% tretinoin for male pattern hair loss by Hyo Seung Shin et al. was on the therapeutic effect of combined tretinoin and minoxidil versus monotherapy of only minoxidil in treating male pattern hair loss. They concluded that the combined therapy 5% minoxidil with 0.01% tretinoin used once daily had equal efficacy and safety with regard to conventional use of 5% minoxidil twice daily. This would mean combining minoxidil and tretinoin in a single application does not only reduce the frequency of application, but there's no loss in the treatment's effect. The second study, tretinoin, enhances minoxidil response in androgenetic alopecia patients by upregulating follicular sulfotransferase enzymes conducted by Asim Sharma and co-authors was dedicated to the biochemistry of minoxidil treatment in. The study indicated that topically applied tretinoin upregulated the expression of follicular sulfotransferase enzymes, which are critically involved in the conversion of minoxidil to its active form, minoxidil sulfate. Tretinoin treatment converted an interesting 43% of subjects who had been predicted to be non-responders to tretinoin into responders, adding further evidence to this potential area of increasing minoxidil efficacy through the possible means of facilitating the activation of the drug at the level of the follicle. Next, 5% or higher azelaic acid should be used at least three times per week, gradually increasing in frequency. 
So now you've made it to the end of the video, but hopefully you actually watched a majority of this video, because sometimes I get questions that could very well be answered by watching the entirety of the video. But anyway, I do have some warnings and some considerations. While these compounds and treatments can be effective, individual reactions may vary, and medical supervision can help monitor progress as well as manage potential side effects. Additionally, you have to avoid applying minoxidil near the mouth or the mustache area, as it can be irritating to the sensitive skin around the lips and nose. So if you're going to put this in your mustache area or just around your lips, be very careful with this and try not to put too much. This irritation may be worsened when the minoxidil is used alongside with tretinoin or azelaic acid, or even both of them, which can further sensitize the skin. Also, potentially consuming minoxidil can be very harmful, as it can lead to systemic cardiovascular side effects. So, maybe you, let's say, put it around your mustache, and then at night you lick your lips while you're sleeping. That's not good, right? If you're licking your mustache or your lips while you're sleeping, you could actually be consuming the minoxidil that's there. So, to be honest, if you're that kind of person, maybe avoid putting it on the mustache, or Maybe just in the morning, that's where you put the minoxidil, right? But just be very cautious that you do not accidentally consume the minoxidil if you put it near your lips or your mustache area, right? Don't do that. Be very careful. Be very mindful if you are to. It should also be noted that with the use of azelaic acid and tretinoin, you may also be increasing the amount of topical minoxidil that becomes absorbed through the skin. It won't be anything like just straight up using low-dose oral minoxidil but I would still recommend keeping an eye on your cardiovascular system for potential shortness of breath and heart palpitations. So, for the previously mentioned reasons, it would be wise to avoid applying these treatments near the mouth, nose, and lips. And as always, I've probably said this a thousand times in this video and others, please seek medical guidance before and during treatment if you should go this path. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. Comment in the comment section below, green flowers if you got this far, and thanks for watching, and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can become a channel member for as little as $2 a month. But anyway, see you in the next video, and peace out.